All right, so I've taken Yarbo out. I've driven around manually without any kind of GPS. In fact, I haven't even set up the app yet. So in order to actually have it work autonomously and to map stuff, I need to set up this data center. And I kind of consider this like a base station. So what this does is this is really your powerhouse for communications. And so that's GPS communication, Wi-Fi. It also has Bluetooth communication in there. And so what this does is from a GPS standpoint, this sets up a high precision local GPS spot at your property that then Yarbo references this. And because the distance between the Yarbo and this is obviously like hundreds of feet, it's very accurate versus using Yarbo um, from Yarbo directly up to the satellites in space because you get some drifting and stuff. So this helps with keeping that centimeter accuracy um, at your location. And then the other thing that this has is Wi-Fi Halo. And so that is a lower frequency Wi-Fi that is better at traveling long distances. It doesn't have a lot of data uh, throughput or like speed, but you don't need a lot of speed uh, for this because you're just sending uh, some text information back and forth. But it can actually support the video of this uh, Yarbo Smart Assist module that has cameras on it that you can look at as well. So that is another one of the antennas. The third big antenna on here, our, our antenna on here is the Bluetooth. Uh, so this is a, another option um, of connection, and this uh, has that Bluetooth on it. Now, on the bottom side, it has two Ethernet ports. One of them is the one that you're going to use, really, and that's the WAN port. So that's the one you're going to get connected to the Internet uh, through the cabling. I'll go over that in just a second here. The other one is a local port. I think I haven't even read about it, but I think that's one is if you want to connect directly uh, to the base station to do some uh, diagnostics or stuff with it. And then on the back side, it also has a grounding cable. This is um, good to use if you have this out um, side, which is where it needs to go. And then, um, especially if you're in a high lightning uh, area, you want to uh, ground this um, with a proper grounding cable and a uh, ground stake into the ground. They do not provide that. That's probably one of the few things they don't provide in the kit. You'll have to provide your own grounding cable and, uh, and stake in the ground. But then on this, this is already, this is how it came assembled. All this stuff's already bolted on. Uh, now you have the pole mount. So it comes with two poles. One of them they call the main pole, and the other one they call like an extension pole. And they're almost identical, um, but one of them has a slot, and this is for uh, the cabling. So you, sorry, I was banging around here. Um, so these snap into here. They have little uh, push locks. They also have set screws that you can install after after you snap them together so that it um, is more permanently installed. But once this locks into place there, this will go up and then you have the option of putting that directly on a mount. So it's just like this, which is probably actually how I'm going to mount it. And you can actually do that on the grass. So they include these long screws here that you can actually just screw this base directly into the grass. And if you, so long as you have 120 degree uh, cone of uh, clear visibility to the sky it means no trees, no houses or anything, and a 120 degree cone coming out of here, then you're good. If you need the extension pole, you can add an extension to get it higher, or you can also have it at a 90 degree angle. So if you're attaching it to your roof, um, or sorry, if you're attaching it to the wall and you need to get out past the, the eave or the gutters and that whatnot, you can use this um, kind of like this where it's coming off the wall and then has a 90. And so to do that 90, they give you this little adapter piece here. And then in this piping is what you're going to have your cable. So this guy gets powered by ethernet. So they include a couple things here on ethernet. One of them is a power of ethernet injector. So this one just gets a, this one this has like a small, like um, maybe foot and a half or two foot uh, power cord. And then they have a three foot long ethernet cord and you want to plug this from this power over um, Ethernet injector into a router, either your main router or a secondary router if you have a mesh network or whatnot, or even better if you have Ethernet ran through your house. This just needs to go into that where it eventually gets the Internet on one side. And then they also provide a 30-foot long Ethernet cable. And this goes from the PoE side, which means it has um, not only data but also power. And then this 30-foot cable goes... From this injector and eventually comes through the inside of this pipe and feeds in here to this WAN port. So that is what powers the unit and also gives it internet which you need. So that is a requirement on this one. It's a little bit different than uh, the past ones where they had direct power to it and then it uses a Wi-Fi to get to your home network. 
This one's using the uh, Ethernet to get to your home network. So uh, let me just screw in the antennas here, and then we'll go and get this screwed on. I'm going to put this um, on my Playhouse because it has power actually out there. And um, then I'm going to make sure that it kind of works throughout my yard. It's supposed to get the, like the Wi-Fi Halo. I think they say something um, like uh, several hundred meters of coverage that will get outdoors. If that's like ideal case with no obstructions. With obstructions, I think I heard something like 200 meters of coverage. So we'll kind of test that out at my, uh, at my house here. So let me just get these uh, antennas. Make sure you match them up to the correct one. They all have labels on them, so it's pretty easy to tell where they go. And then you want to point them up into the sky and take off the tape as well. All right, so since the Wi-Fi antenna is long, they actually include this little plastic bracket that slides over the top of it, and then it locks it down to keep it in that upright um, position because you want it uh, pointed uh, up to get the best signal. And so it has a little bushing and a pin that just slides in here and then locks in place. That keeps it in that upright position. All right, there we go. You can see that is in there with a little pin. So now this guy is pretty much ready. So to show you in this good lighting, these big connectors here, these are weather tight ethernet connectors. This one, they're big and bulky, but you can unscrew them and they have a couple pieces that come apart. And that is how it is um, secured here for um, having a weather tight seal. So you have the main body here and then the rubber plug actually is something that you remove because you're gonna have the ethernet cable in place of it. So this little plug is something that you can actually throw away but this is what you're going to thread the uh, ethernet cable into here. You're going to put the little rubber um, grommet around it. That grommet then goes and fits inside of uh, these little fingers. And then when you tighten it back down, that rubber goes around and scrunches on the uh, ethernet cable. So that's how you get the weather tight connection. All right, well, let me go out to my playset and get this installed. All right, so there is my data center mounted on top of my little castle playset here. I just plugged it in so you can see it's flashing green, so I assume that means I need to go set it up. All right, so I have my data center set up. It's actually on the other side of the barn over there in the middle of the backyard. But I'm gonna try to see if I can set this up now. My data center is flashing green, which I think means it's not connected to the internet, but let me just see what this says. So it says prepare it, which I've set up done. I got a snow blower module. It's assembled and powered on. All right, it looks like it um, automatically found it. So this has a like Bluetooth, so it's probably connecting via Bluetooth um, right now. Now, obviously, it looks like it wants to update the um, the firmware on it. All right, so you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name mine Tater Tot, so it can be running around. And we will make sure that it is good to go here. All right, so I picked up my data center, which I'm surprised that it did that from this far away. So I think what it's saying is that I'm too far away from the Bluetooth, because I'm probably a good 100 feet away from it. So I probably need to go closer to the data center to do the initial setup. All right, so here we go. We'll walk over here to the data center. You can see it up here on the uh, playset. Now it's got the flashing green light, which tells me that it's not connected to the internet is what the data says. All right, so up on top of there, the green flashy light, that is the data center. I'm gonna to try to reconnect to it again this time. All right, so now it picked it up. I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade that to firmware. All right, so that was pretty quick. It automatically detected firmware update, and now it's also going to um, uh, upload. So I downloaded it from the internet, and now it's uploading it via Bluetooth to the data center up there. All right, so the over the air update was successful. I see the light turned off. Now it's turning back on. You can see it kind of changing colors there. So I'm assuming it's rebooting here. All right, so you can't see the lights on the data center because I turned them off, but I'm going through the setup process now. It tells you to walk around and find a good signal. I already know I have good signal. I have no trees around this, so that's plenty of uh, visual to line of sight. It shows me 28 satellites connected. So I'm installing it now, which is basically securing that location and it's saving it. If I were to move that data center, it would mess up the mapping. So you want to have it in a good spot and then go through and actually install this unit. I have my yard board down here. It shows here that I'm connected. I have GPS and I'm Bluetooth. So I'm going to go ahead and initialize them with them together. Now my docking station's 
100 feet away, but um, I do think it's best to have your, let's see if this worked. Now it's being processed. Okay, so I think it just takes a second for it. There it goes, now it's green. So I think when I initially set it up, it flashes right at me until it initializes, but now it looks like it's good. So now I can go and install the docking station. All right, so here it's saying to drive your yard boat, you want to have good GPS signal wherever you place the docking station because it has to be very accurate um, to position itself so it's directly on top of the uh, wireless charging pad. So I already have one picked out, so I'm going to go ahead and move over there and um, and make sure the good GPS signal. All right, so here we are. We're on the docking station. You can see that it still says it's strong for GPS and Bluetooth. So I'm going to say here it is. Now, you can obviously drive it with that little thumb pad at the bottom. Um, so let's see. Energize. Yep, I already have it plugged in and energized. Maybe you can see back there there's a blue light. I have it screwed in. And now we're going to save the position of it. Person detected. Person detected. Person detected. Person detected. All right, so it looks like it found its spot there. It took it just a couple tries, and then I'm going to have it save that position now. So now it's going to remember this as being its home base. All right, so now it is ready to do the mapping. You have to have the data center and this um, position in order to do the mapping now. You can move the docking station later. It will delete any pathways, not areas, but pathways connected to it. But your mapping will stay the same. If you move your data center, you'll have to remap. So I'm going to do the remapping. I'm going to do the mapping once it's daylight out. So I'm going to head to bed now. But I have this set up, and now it can charge here overnight.